Shalom and welcome to the adventures of YHWHY, where we go out into the wilderness, we study the word of Yahuwah. Today we are going to be looking at the Besurah Yaakov, the Gospel of James. This is not the book of James. This is also called the Gospel of the Proto-Evangelion, an historical account of the birth of Mashiach and Miriam, his mother, by Yaakov, the brother of Adonai Yahusha Hamashiach, chief apostle and the first elder of the Kodeshim, the called out assembly in Yerushalayim. Besora Yaakov, chapter 1. In the history of the twelve tribes of Yashar'el, we read there was a certain person called Yoakim who, being very rich, made double offerings made to Elohim, as spoken of in the Gospel of Miriam 1, verse 3. Having made this resolution, my substance shall be for the benefit of the whole people, that I may find chesed, mercy, from Yahweh Elohim for the forgiveness of my sins. As spoken of in Hanukkah, the Hanukkah of Mary 1 verse 7, there was a great feast of the Yehudim of Yahuwah, when the children of Yasharel offered their gifts, and Joachim also offered his, as spoken of in the Gospel of Mary 1 verse 7. And Reuben, the Kohanim Hagatol, opposed him, saying, it is not lawful for you to offer your gifts, uh, seeing you have not begot any issue in Yashar'el. At this, Joachim, being very concerned, very much, went away to consult the registries of the twelve tribes to see whether he was the only person who had begot no issue. But upon inquiry, he found that all the righteous, the Zadok, had raised up seed in Yasharel. Then he called to mind the patriarch Abraham, how that Elohim in the end of his life had given him his son Yitzhak, upon which he was exceedingly distressed and would not be seen by his woman but retired into the wilderness, and fixed his tent there, and fasted forty days and forty nights, saying to himself, I will not go down either to eat or drink, till Yahuwah Elohe shall look down upon me, but prayer shall be my meat and drink. Besorah Yaakob, chapter 2. In the meantime, his woman Anna was distressed and perplexed on the double account, and said, I will mourn both for my widowhood and my barrenness. Then drew near a great feast of the of Yahuwah, and Yehudith, her maid, said, How long will you thus afflict your soul? The feast of Yahuwah has now come when it is unlawful for anyone to mourn. Take therefore this hood, which was given by one who makes such things, for it is not fit that I, who am a servant, should wear it, but it well suits a person of your great character. But Anna replied, Depart from me, I am not used to such things. Besides, Yahuwah has greatly humbled me. I fear some ill-designed person has given you this, and you have come to reproach me with my sin. Then Yehudith her maid answered, What evil shall I wish you when you will not hearken to me? I cannot wish you a greater curse than you are under, in that Elohim has shut up your womb, that you should not be a mother in Yasharel. At this Anna was exceedingly troubled, 
and having on her wedding garment, went about in the afternoon to walk in her garden. And she saw a laurel tree and sat under it and prayed to Yahuwah, saying, O Elohim of my fathers, bless me and regard my prayer as you have blessed the womb of Sarah and gave her a son Yitzhak. Besorah Yaakov, chapter 3. And as she was looking towards heaven, Shamayim, she perceived a sparrow's nest in the laurel, and mourning within herself, she said, Woe is me, who begat me? And what womb did bear me? that I should be thus accursed before the children of Yasharel, and that they should reproach me and deride me in the Bet Yah, the temple of Eloah. Woe is me, to what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the very beasts of the earth, for even the beasts of the earth are fruitful before me. O Yahuwah, woe is me! To what can I be compared? I am not compared to the brute animal, for even the brute animals are fruitful before you. O Yahuwah, woe is me! To what am I comparable? I cannot be comparable to these waters, for even the waters are faithful before you, O Yahuwah. Woe is me! To what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the waves of the sea, for these, whether they are calm or in motion, with the fish which are in them, praise you, Yah, O Yahuwah. Woe is me! To what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the very earth, for the earth produces its fruits and praises you, O Yahweh. Besra Yaakov 4 Then Amalek, an angel of Yahuwah, stood by her and said, Anna, Anna, Yahuwah has heard your prayer. You shall conceive and bring forth and your progeny shall be spoken of in all the world. And Anna answered, As Yahuwah Elohai lives, whatever I bring forth, whether it be male or female, I will devote it to Yahuwah Elohai, as spoken of in the Gospel of Miriam 1 verse 6. And it shall minister to him in holy things, Kodesh, during its whole life. And behold, there appeared two angels, saying to her, Behold, Joachim, your husband, is coming with his shepherds. For an angel of Yahuwah has also come down to him, and said, Yahuwah Elohim has heard your prayer. Make haste and go from here, For behold, Anna, your woman, shall conceive. And Joachim went down and called his shepherds, saying, Bring me ten she-lambs without spot or blemish, and they shall be for Yahuwah Elohim. And bring me twelve calves without blemish, and the twelve calves shall be for the Kohanim, and the elders. Bring me also a hundred goats, and a hundred goats shall be for the whole people. And Joachim went down with the shepherds. And Anna stood by the gate and saw Joachim coming with his shepherds. And she ran, and hanging about his neck, she said, Now I know Yahweh has greatly blessed me, for behold, I know I who was as a widow am no longer a widow, and I who was barren shall conceive. Besura Yaakov 5 
And Joachim abode the first day in his house. But on the following day he brought his offerings, and said, If Yahuwah be propitious to me, let the plate which is on the priest's forehead make it manifest. And he consulted the plate which the priest, the Kohen, wore, and saw it, and behold, sin was not found in him. And Joachim said, Now I know that Yahuwah is propitious to me, and has taken away all my sins. And he went down from the temple of Yahuwah justified, and he went down to his own house. And when nine months were fulfilled to Anna, she brought forth and said to the midwife that I have brought forth. And she told her a girl. And Anna said, Yahuwah has this day magnified my soul. And she laid her in bed. And when the days of her purification were accomplished, she gave suck to the child and called her name Miriam. Besorah 6 And the child increased in strength every day, so that when she was nine months old, her mother put her upon the ground to try if she could stand, and when she had walked nine steps, she came again to her mother's lap. Then her mother caught her up and said, As Yahuwah Elohai lives, you shall not walk again on this earth till I bring you to the temple of Yahuwah. Accordingly, she made her a chamber, a Kodesh place, and suffered nothing uncommon or unclean to come near her, but invited certain undefiled daughters of Yasharel, and they drew her aside. But when the child was a year old, Joachim made a great feast and invited the Kohens, the scribes, the elders, and all the people of Yasharel. And Joachim then made an offering of the girl to the chief priests. And they blessed her, Baruch, giving the Elohim of our fathers, bless this girl and give her a name famous and lasting through all generations. And all the people replied, so be it, Umain. Then Joachim a second time offered her to the Kohans, and they blessed her, saying, O El Elyon, regard this girl and bless her with an everlasting blessing. Upon this her mother took her up and gave her the breast and sung the following song to Yahuwah. I will sing a song to Yahuwah Elohe, for he has visited me and taken away from me the reproach of my enemies and has given me the fruit of his zadokness, his righteousness, that it may now be told to the sons of Reuben that Anna gives suck, that she bore, she put the child to rest in the room which she had consecrated, and she went out and ministered to them. And when the Moed, the feast, was ended, they went away rejoicing and praising the Elohim of Yasharel. Besarah Yaakob 7 But the girl grew, and when she was two years old, Joachim said to Anna, Let us lead her to the temple of Yahuwah that we may perform our vow, which we have vowed to Yahuwah Elohim, lest he should be angry with us, 
and our offering be unacceptable. But Anna said, Let us wait the third year, lest she should be at a loss to know her father. And Joachim said, Let us then wait. And when the child was three years old, Joachim said, Let us invite the daughters of the Ibrahim, who are undefiled, and let each of them take a lamp, and let them be lighted, that the child may not turn back again, and her mind be set against the temple of Yahuwah. And they did this until they ascended into the temple of Yahuwah. And the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest, received her, and blessed her, and said, Miriam, Yahuwah Elohim, has magnified your name to all generations, and to the very end of time. Yahuwah will show his redemption to the children of Yasharel by you, and he placed upon her upon the third step of the altar, and Yahuwah gave Hanan grace to her, and she danced with her feet, and all the house of Yasharel loved her. Besura Yaakov 8 And her parents went away filled with wonder and praising Elohim because the girl did not return back to them. But Miriam continued in the temple as a dove educated there and received her food from the hand of an angel. And when she was twelve years old, the Cohens met in a council and said, Behold, Miriam is twelve years of age. What shall we do with her for fear lest the Kodesh place of Yahuwah, Bet Yahuwah, should be defiled? The time of menstruation. They replied, the, the Kohens, to Zachariahu, the Kohen Hagadol, Do you stand at the altar of Yahuwah and enter into the Kodesh place and make petition concerning her? And whatever Yahuwah shall manifest to you, that do. Then the Kohen Hagadol entered into the Kodesh Kodeshim, the Holy of Holies, and taking away with him the breastplate of judgment, made prayers concerning her. And behold, the Melech, the angel of Yahuwah, came to him and said, Zakar Yahu, Zakar Yahu, Go forth and call together all the widowers among the people, and let every one of them bring his rod. And he, by whom Yahuwah shall show a sign, shall be the husband of Miriam. And the criers went out throughout all Yahud, proclaiming, and the shofar of Yahuwah, sounded, and all the people ran and met together, Yosef also throwing away his hatchet went out to meet them, and when they were met, they went to the Kohen Hagadol, every man taking his rod. After the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest had received their rods, he went into the Hekel, the temple, to pray. And when he had finished his prayer, he took the rods, and went forth and distributed them. And there was no miracle attending them. The last rod was taken by Yosef. And behold, a dove proceeded out of the rod, and flew upon the head of Yosef. And the Kohen Hagadol said, Yosef, you are the person chosen to take the virgin, the Betula of Yahuwah, 
to keep her for him. But Yosef refused, saying, I am an old man and have children. I have children, but she is young, and I fear lest I should appear ridiculous in Yashael. And the Kohen Hagadol replied, Yosef, fear Yahweh Elohekam, and remember how Elohim dealt with Dothan, Korak, and Aviram, how the earth opened and swallowed them up because of their contradiction. Now therefore, Yosef, fear Elohim, lest things like this should happen in your family. Yosef, then being afraid, took her to his house. And Yosef said to Miriam, Behold, I have taken you from the temple of Yahweh, and now I will leave you in my house. I must go to mind my trade of building. Yahuwah is with you. The Surah Yaakov 9 And it came to pass in the Sanhedrin, the council of Cohen's the priests, it was said, Let us make a new veil for the, the Hekel, the temple of Yahuwah. And the Kohen Hagadol said, Call together to me seven undefiled virgins of the families of David. And the servant went and brought them into the Hekel, the Bet Yahuwah, temple of Yahuwah. And the Kohen Hagadol said to them, Cast lots before me now. Who of you shall, one, spin the golden thread? Who the two blue? Who the scarlet? The fine linen? And who the true purple? Then the Kohen Hagadol knew of Miriam that she was of the family of David, and he called her, and the true purple fell to her lot to spin. And she went away to her own house. But from that time, Zachariahu, the Kohen, the priest, became dumb and could not speak, and Shemuel was placed in his room till Zechariah, who spoke again. But Miriam took the true purple and spun it, and she took a pot and went out to draw water, and heard a voice saying to her, Hail, you who are full of chesed, grace. Yahuwah is with you and are a blessed among women. And she looked round to the right and to the left to see from where that voice came. And then trembling went into the house and lay down the water pot and took the purple and sat down in her seat to work it. And behold, the Melech, the angel of Yahuwah, stood by her and said, Fear not, Miriam, for you have found favor in the sight of Elohim, which she, which when she heard, she responded with herself that what sort of a salutation meant. And the angel said to her, Yahuwah is with you, and you shall conceive. To which she replied, What? Shall I conceive by the Elohim Havaim and bring forth as all other women do? But the angel returned, Answer, Not so, Miriam, O, oh, but the Ruach HaKodesh shall come upon you, and the power of El Elyon shall overshadow you. Wherefore, that which shall be born conceived of you shall be Kodesh, 
and shall be called the Bet, the Ben Elohim Chaim, son of Elohim Chaim, and you shall call his name Yahusha, for he shall save his people from their sins. And behold, your cousin Elishiva, she also has conceived a son in her old age. And now, this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren, for nothing is impossible with Elohim. And Miriam said, Behold the handmaid of Yahuwah, let it be to me according to your word. And when she had brought wrought her purple, she carried it to the Kohen Hagadol. And the high priest blessed her, saying, Miriam, Yahweh Elohim has magnified your name, and you shall be blessed in all the ages of the world. Then Miriam, filled with joy, went away to her cousin Elisheva, and knocked at the door. Which, when Elisheva heard, she ran and opened to her, and blessed her, and said, How is this to me that my mother, that the mother of my Adonai should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of your salutation reached my ears, that which is in me leaped and blessed you. But Miriam, being ignorant of all these mysterious things which the archangel Gabriel had spoken to her, lifted up her eyes to the Shamayim, to heaven, and said, O Yahuwah, what am I that all the generations of the earth should call me Baruched, blessed? But perceiving her daily to grow big and being afraid, she went home and hid herself from the children of Yasharel, and was fourteen years old when all these things happened. Besura Yaakov, Chapter 10 Narrator's Notes It's Hanukkah time in Hills Canyon, and I'm shivering, but I hope you're warm. Chapter 10 And when her sixth month was come, Yosef returned from his building of houses abroad, important, which was his trade, and entering into the house, found the virgin was had grown big. When smiting his face, he said, With what face can I look up to Yahuwah Elohe? Or what shall I say concerning this young woman? For I received her as a virgin out of the Bet Yahuwah Elohe of Ain Elohenu, and of have not preserved her as such. Who has thus deceived me? Who has committed this evil in my house, and seducing the Betula, the virgin from me, has defiled her? Is not the history of Adam exactly accomplished in me? For in the very instant of his glory, the serpent came and found Hawa alone and seduced her. Just after the same manner, it had happened to me. Then Yosef, arising from the ground, called her and said, You have been so much favored by Elohim. Why have you done this? Why have you debased your soul? You who were educated in the Bet Yah, the Kodesh Kodeshim, the Holy of Holies, and received your food from the hand of angels. But she, with a flood of tears, replied, I am innocent and have known no man. Then Yosef said, How does it come to pass that you are with child? And Miriam answered, 
as Yahuwah Eloheinu lives, I do not know by what means. Then Yosef was exceedingly afraid and went away from her, considering what he should do with her, and he thus reasoned with himself. If I conceal her crime, I shall be guilty by the Torah of Yahuwah, and if I uncover her to the children of Yasharel, I fear lest she bring with child by an angel. I shall be found to have betrayed the life of an innocent person. What therefore shall I do? I will privately dismiss her. Then the night had come upon him, when, behold, the Melech, the angel of Yahuwah, appeared to him in a dream, and said, Be not afraid to take the young woman, for that which is within her is of the Ruach HaKodesh, and she shall bring forth a Ben, a son, and you shall call his name Yahoshua, Yahoshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. Then Yosef arose from his sleep and glorified the Elohim of Yashar El, who had shown him such favor, and preserved the virgin. Besara Yaakov, <sighs> chapter 11. Then came Hananyahu, the scribe and said to Jehoshaphat, Why have we not seen you since your return? And Joseph replied, Because I was weary after my journey, and have rested the first day. But Hananyahu, turning about, perceived the virgin big with child, and went away to the Kohen, the priest, and told him, Joseph, in whom you placed so much confidence is guilty of a notorious crime, in that he has defiled the virgin whom he received out of the temple of Yahweh, and has privately married her, not uncovering it to the children of Yasharel. When the Kohen said, Has Yosef done this? Hananyahu replied, If you send any of your servants, you will find that she is with child. And the servants went and found it as he said. Upon this both she and Yosef were brought to their trial. And the priest said to her, Miriam, what have you done? Why have you debased your soul and forgot your Elohim, seeing you were brought up in the Kodesh Kodeshim, the Holy of Holies, and received your food from the hand of angels and heard their songs? Why have you done this? To which, with a flood of tears, she answered, As Yahuwah Elohim lives, I am innocent in his sight, seeing I know no man. Then the Kohen, the priest, said to Yosef, Why have you done this? And Yosef answered, As Yahweh Elohim lives, I have not, cons have not been concerned with her. But the priest said, Do not lie, but declare the truth, you have privately married her, and not uncovered it to the children of Yasharel, and humbled yourself under the mighty hand of Elohim, that your seed might be blessed. And Yosef was silent. Then said the priest to Yosef, You must restore to the temple of Yahuwah the virgin which you took from there. But he whipped bitterly, and the priest added, I will cause you both to drink the water of Yahuwah, for it which is for trial, it's mentioned in Torah, and 
so your iniquity shall be laid upon before you. Open. Then the Kohen took the water and made Yosef drink and sent him to a mountainous place. And he returned perfectly well. And all the people wondered that his guilt was not discovered. So the Kohen, the priest, said, Since Yahuwah has not made your sins evident, neither do I condemn you. So he sent them away. Then Yosef took Miriam and went to his house, rejoicing and praising the Elohim of Yasharel. Besorah Yaakov 12 And it came to pass that there went forth a decree from Caesar, the Emperor Augustus, that all the Yehudim should be taxed, who were of Bet Lechem in Yahud. And Yosef said, I will take care that my children are taxed. But what shall I do with this young woman? To have her taxed as my woman, I am ashamed. And if I tax her as my daughter, all Yasharel knows she is not my daughter. When the appointed time of Yahuwah's appointed times shall come, let him do as seems good to him. And he saddled the ass and put her upon it. And Yosef and Shimon followed after her and arrived at Bet Lechem within three miles. Then Yosef, turning about, saw Miriam sorrowful and said within himself, Perhaps she is in pain for that which is within her. But when he turned about again, he saw her laughing and said to her, Miriam, how happens it that I sometimes see you sorrow and sometimes laughter and joy are your countenance? And Miriam replied to him, I see two people within my eyes, the one weeping and mourning, the other laughing and rejoicing. And he went again across the way. And Miriam said to Yosef, Take me down from the ass, for that which is in me presses to come forth. But Yosef replied, Where shall I take you? For the place is a desert, the wilderness. When then she, Miriam, said again to Yehosef, Take me down, for that which is within me oppresses me mightily. And Yosef took her down, and he found there a cave, and let her into it. Besura Yaakov, 13. And note, it's cold in the cave right now. And leaving her and his sons in the cave, Yosef went forth to seek an Evrit midwife in the village of Bet Lechem, the house of bread. But as I was going, said Yosef, I looked up into the air, and I saw the clouds astonished, and the fowls of the air stopping in the midst of their flight. And I looked down toward the earth and saw a table spread, and working people sitting around it, but their hands were upon the table, and they did not move to eat. They who had meat in their mouths did not eat. They who lifted their hands up to their heads did not draw them back. And they who lifted them up to their mouths did not put anything in, but all their faces were fixed 
upward, and I beheld the sheep dispersed, and yet the sheep stood still, and the shepherd lifted up his hand to smite them, and his hand continued up, and I looked to a river, and saw the kids with their mouths close to the water, and touching it, but they did not drink. Besore Yaakov 14 Then I beheld a woman coming down from the mountains, and she said to me, Where are you going? And I said to her, I am going to inquire for an every midwife. She replied to me, Where is the woman that is to be delivered? And I answered, In the cave, the cave, and she is betrothed to me. When the midwife said, Is she not your wife? Yosef answered, It is Miriam, who the, was educated in the Kodesh Kodeshim, the Holy of Holies, in the Bet Yahuwah. And she fell to me by lot, and is n not my woman, but has conceived by the Ruach HaKodesh. The midwife said, Is this true? He said, Come and see. And the midwife went along with him and stood in the cave. Then a bright cloud overshadowed the cave. And the midwife said, This day my soul is magnified, for my eyes have seen surprising things. And Yeshua is brought forth to Yasharel. But on a sudden, the cloud became a great light in the cave, so that their eyes could not bear it. But the light gradually decreased until the infant appeared and sucked the breast of his mother, Miriam. When the midwife cried out and said, How glorious a day is this! in that my eyes have seen this extraordinary sight. And the midwife went out from the cave, and Shalom met her. And the midwife said to her, I will tell you most surprising thing which I saw. A virgin, a Betula, has brought forth an Alma, which is a thing contrary to nature, to which Shalom, or Salome, replied, As Yahuwah Elohai lives, unless I receive particular proof of this matter, I will not believe that a virgin has brought forth. Then Shalom went in, and the midwife said, Miriam, show yourself for a controversy has risen concerning you. And Shalom received satisfaction, but her hand was withered, and she groaned bitterly, and said, Woe to me because of my iniquity, for I have tempted the living Elohim, and my hand is ready to drop off. Narrator's note, she gives testimony in the Gospel of Nicodemus. Continuing, Then Shalom made her supplication to Yahuwah, and said, O Elohim of my fathers, remember me, for I am the seed of Abraham, and Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Do not make me a reproach among the children of Yashar'el, but restore me sound to my parents. For you well know, O Yahuwah, that I have performed many offices of charity in your name. Receive my reward from you. Upon this an angel of Yahuwah stood by Shalom and said, Yahuwah Elohim has heard your prayer. 
reach forth your hand to the child and carry him, and by that means you shall be restored. Shalom, filled with exceedingly joy, went to the child and said, I will touch him. And she purposed to worship him. For she said, this is a great melech, gadol melech, great king, which is born in Yashorel. And straightway, shalom was cured. Then the midwife went out of the cave, being approved by Elohim. And lo, a voice came to Shalom, do not declare the strange things which you have seen, till the child shall come to Yerushalayim. So Shalom departed it, approved by Elohim, and the narrator's eyes full of tears and freezing into icicles. Besarah Yaakob 15 then Yosef was preparing to go away because there arose a great disorder in Bethlehem by the coming of some magi, the wise men from the ur Eint, the east, who said, Where is the king of the Yehudim born? For we have seen his star rising in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was exceedingly troubled, and sent messengers to the Magi, and to the Cohens, and inquired of them in the town hall, and said to them, Where do you have it written concerning Mashiach the king? Where should he be born? Then they said to him, In Bethlehem of Yehuda, For thus it is written, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Yehuda, are not the least among the princes of Yehuda. For out of you shall come a ruler, who shall rule my people, Yashar El referring to the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. And having sent away the chief priests, he inquired to the Magi in the town hall. Note, Micah was quoting from the book of the visions, the Hala Yishiyahu, the ascension of Yishiyahu, highly recommend the book. Back to our story. And having sent away the Kohen Hagadol, he inquired all the Magi in the town hall and said to them, What sign was it that you saw concerning the king that is born? They answered him, We saw an extraordinary large star shining among the stars of the Shamaim, heaven and so outshined all the other stars as that they became not visible. And we knew thereby that a great king was born in Yashar El, and therefore we are come to worship him. Then said Herod to them, Go and make diligent inquiry, and if you find the child, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. So the wise men went forth, and behold, the star which they saw rising in the east went before them, till it came and stood over the cave where the young child was with Miriam his mother. Then they brought forth out of their treasures and offered to him gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream by an angel 
that they should not return to Herod through Yahud. They departed into their own country by another way. Side note, please read first book of Adam and Hava, as well as the Testament of Moshe, gives you much more information where the gold frankincense of myrrh came from. Besura Yaakov 16. When Herod, perceiving that he was mocked by the Magi, and being very angry, commanded certain men to go and to kill all the children that were in Bethlehem from two years old and under. But Miriam, hearing that the children were to be killed, being under much fear, took the child and wrapped him up in swaddling clothes and laid him in a sukkah because there was no room for them in the inn. Elisheva, also hearing that her son Yohokanon was about to be searched for, took him and went up to the mountains and looked around for a place to hide him, and there was no and there was no secret place to be found. Then she groaned within herself and said, O mountain of Yahuwah, receive the mother with the child. For Elisheva could not climb up, and instantly the mountain was divided and received them. And there appeared to them an angel of Yahuwah to preserve them. But Herod made search after Yahukanon, and sent servants to Zachariahu the Kohen Hagadol, when he was ministering at the altar, and said to him, Where have you hidden your son? He said to them, I am a minister of Elohim and a servant at the altar. How should I know where my son is? So the servants went back and told Herod the whole at which he was incensed and said, Is not this son of his like to be king of Yasharel? He said, Therefore again his servants to Zechariah, saying, Tell us the truth where you where is your son for you know that your life is in my hand so the servants went and told him all this but Zachariah replied to them I am a martyr for Elohim and if you shed my blood Yahweh will receive my soul besides I Besides, know that you shed innocent blood. However, Zechariah was murdered in the entrance of the temple altar, and about the por- about the portion partition. But the children of Yasharel did not know when he was killed. Then, at the hour of salutation, the Kohens, the priests, went into the temple, but. Zechariah did not, according to custom, meet them and bless them. Yet they still continued waiting for him to salute them. And when they found he did not in a long time come, one of them ventured into the Kodesh place where the altar was, and he saw blood lying upon the ground congealed. When, behold, a voice from heaven said, Zechariah is murdered, and his blood shall not be wiped away until the avenger of his blood come. But when he heard this, he was afraid, and went forth and told the priests that 
what he had seen and heard. And they all went in and saw the fact. Then the roofs of the temple howled and were rent from the top to the bottom, and they could not find the body, but only blood made hard like stone. And they went away and told the people that Zachariahu was murdered. And all the tribes of Yasharel heard therefore, and mourned for him, and lamented three days. Then the priests, the Kohens, took counsel together concerning a person to succeed him. And Shimon and the other priests cast lots, and the lot fell upon Shimon. For he had been assured by the Ruach HaKodesh that he should not die till he had seen Mashiach come in the flesh. I, Yaakob, wrote this history in Yerushalayim, and when the disturbance was, I retired into a desert place until the death of Herod, and the disturbance ceased at Yerushalayim. That which remains is that I glorify Elohim, that he has given me such hakma wisdom to write to you who are filled with the Ruach, and who love Elohim, to whom is ascribed glory and dominion for ever and ever, Leolam Fa'ed, Umain. Thus concludes the Besorah Yaakob. This is Mr. Vance of YHWHY, Brother Yochanan. I thank you and praise you for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Pigeon and the whole at Sefer team. Be at Shalom. Yivereka Yahweh v'yishmereka Ya'er Yahweh panavaleka v'yuneka v'yasemlecha Shalom in Yahweh Yeshua.